Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be working inside of Envision Studio. And I gotta say, Studio is getting a lot better. I've been playing around with it a lot recently. And I think a recent update seemed to smooth out a lot of the performance issues it was having in the past. And I think Studio is eventually gonna become my go-to design tool. I know that's a bold statement. I've been a sketch user uh, up until now. I've been using the sketch and Envision combo together using the craft plugin, but I think Studio is just becoming an all-around great design tool with the added benefit of having the Envision ecosystem. So if I wanna collaborate with others or share a public link and have clients comment on my work, I think it's just a great all-around tool and they're really nailing a lot of stuff. I'm gonna get into some of the new, uh, new features that came out of this update in a later video. But for now, I just wanted to share a design concept I've been working on. I've been feeling kind of inspired recently by baseball season. As some of you guys might know, um, I'm a huge baseball fan, specifically a huge Yankee fan, and more specifically, a huge Aaron Judge fan, as you can see by this, uh, this design here. But yeah, I was watching the Yankees sweep the Red Sox last night, and uh, I was curious about some of Judge's stats. So I actually went on, I think it was MLB.com, and I was trying to like find stats and like his past, his past season stats. I forget exactly what I was looking for, but all these baseball stats websites are pretty lame in my opinion. They're not a very great visual experience for a user. They're very like Excel-like. Like, let me show you. Here's, here's baseballreference.com. You just have like tables upon tables of stats. And visually, like this is not a very great user experience. So I wanted to do something kind of creative. Um, I've also, for one of my clients, I was designing a product detail page with a lot of um, side to side movement. And I think the motion design for the PDP really brought it to life. So I wanted to combine a few of these things I've been working on and create a really cool visual experience for player stats. So here's like, here's Aaron Judge. Um, here's like a player dashboard essentially. So like we have his 2017 stats. We have a tab for batting and fielding. So these are like his top batting stats. I picked 2017 because he had a really great year then. Um, here's his name. Here's some more attributes. Um, here's his top attributes like he hits the ball harder than anyone in the league so like I have like a little le level bar here he throws really hard etc cetera, etc cetera. so I thought this was a pretty cool visual representation of a player a lot better than something like this in my opinion you know granted it doesn't show as much data but sometimes less is more in design right so yeah here's like the initial screen I designed I I'm probably going to design a few more screens I actually might make this a multiple part video depending on how long it takes but I want to walk you through what I was thinking for motion design and kind of how a user would interact with this page. But before I do that, um, I'll kind of break down a few of these design elements. Um, one thing I did that you can't see here, I actually made a video on how to do this earlier, but um, each of these numbers here is actually masked off. And I made this like number spinner kind of interface. So basically I have three columns of numbers um, from one to 10. And I'm gonna link my past video for my numeric spinner tutorial to show you how exactly I did this. But the idea is these numbers are gonna kind of spin into place once this page loads. It's gonna create some visual interest and it's gonna be really cool. Um, and then what I'm also thinking is these level bars will kind of fill up as this page loads, maybe like stagger to like this first one will come, come in first, followed by the second one, followed by third and fourth. Um, so that's kind of what I'm thinking, and I'm, I'm going to kind of freestyle the rest. So hopefully this uh, this works out. Let's see. So I went ahead and renamed this original artboard just the number two, because this is going to be the second state, actually. We want to create an initial state, um, because I don't want this to be my... I want this to be the end state, basically, of this transition. But we need a state before that, so we need it to go from this state to this state but we wanna create differences in these states because Studio is gonna animate the difference between these similar elements. So in this initial state, um, what I first wanna do actually is set all of these numbers to zero. So I'm just gonna reposition these numbers, set them to zero. Remember these are numbered zero through nine. And let me just make sure it's lined up. So I'm gonna actually do this to all these numbers and just so you guys aren't bored, um, I'll fast forward the video, but the idea is I'm just gonna reset all of these numbers to zero so that they spin once they get to the second artboard. Cool, so I reset all of these to zero. I also made this initial state our home artboard. 
So let's create an interaction to get from screen one to two. So let's just do a timeout interaction. So let's select new interaction. Let's do a timeout trigger. Select timer. We'll do a 0.2 second timeout, that's fine. And we'll navigate to artboard two, select motion. We can have this take 0.8 seconds. And let's go to our preview and see what happens. So look how these numbers are spinning into place. Pretty cool. I think right now there's not much visual interest here because they're all spinning at the exact same time. We can create some time differences in a second, but already pretty cool animation. And I'm just hitting Command R to reset. Very cool. Um, what else can we do? So we want to be thinking, you know, what is going to change from screen to screen between these similar elements. And what I'm thinking is we're going to have a lot of right to left movement. So in this initial state, I want to move everything over to the right. And then in the second state, it's going to slide from right to left, or at least most of these elements. I think this can stay like these stats here. So maybe what we'll do for these guys is just actually, we just leave it how it is. I don't think that needs to move, but let's have all this stuff. So Aaron Judge, his height, his weight, the Yankee logo, his name, all this stuff. We'll just move, I don't know, maybe 50 pixels to the right. So let's see what happens now. Cool, and we wanna create some differences we could even do a parallax effect here because we have some depth elements here, right? So we have a foreground element and a background element. We have Aaron Judge as our foreground element. And then this Yankee logo is like our background element. So what we can do actually is very simple. I wanna make it seem like Judge is moving faster because he's closer to us. So to accomplish that, I'm just gonna have him move a greater distance. So in this initial state, I'm just gonna move him further to the right than this Yankee logo. So just doing that should create, yeah, you see there's like a, a slight time difference between Judge and the Yankee logo, and it creates more of a depth effect. It's kind of like an optical illusion. I actually made a video on this. I'll link below as well, or somewhere on the screen. But a very subtle, subtle difference here. But I think it creates a really cool illusion of depth. Next, I wanna work on these kind of level bars here. So in this initial state, I actually want these to be pretty much at zero and then they're gonna fill up. So I'm just gonna move them over and fade them all the way out, like so. In Studio, we're really just always thinking what happens from screen to screen with similar elements. That's, it's kind of a different way of thinking. Um, if you're used to working in like Flinto or Principle, it's a little different, but actually Principle is pretty similar. But So let's see what happens now. So these should fill up, very cool. Right now they're all filling up at the same exact time. I'm gonna create some time delays in the edit timeline in a second, but that's pretty cool motion. Very dynamic looking. What else? I think, I think that looks good. Again, we're gonna probably fade a lot of the stuff out in the initial state, but I just wanna see what's happening first before I do that. All right, I think we're ready to get to the nitty gritty of all this in the edit timeline. So let's go to the edit timeline with screen one selected. Now, the first thing I wanna do is kind of delay each of each subsequent stat here after the one prior. So let's see, let's take the slugging one, slugging percentage, and we'll just delay it. Let's see what happens here. Something like that, and then this one we can delay even more, and then this one, create the staggered effect. That's pretty cool. Um, also, I don't really like this easing. So the default is this ease both. I just wanna make it a little more aggressive. So I'm just gonna drag to the right, or bottom right and the top left. That's something I do a lot. Just makes it a little more aggressive of an e easing curve. So already we've created a lot more visual interest just by delaying some elements. It doesn't look as robotic, it kind of flows more. And then let's see. So now I want to delay each subsequent 
um, fill layer. So I think I actually named these, like the fill of this bar I named fill, and then this part I named track. So let's go into the attributes folder here. And the first one we're gonna delay, so we're not actually not gonna delay this average exit velocity. By the way, that's how hard the ball leaves the bat. And Aaron Judge, I think, is the has the hardest exit, sorry, has the hardest average exit velocity in the MLB. So he crushes the ball. But yeah, that one's not gonna get delayed. But this arm strength one, we can just go right into the arm strength folder. We'll find the fill. And we actually wanna delay the width. So let's see what happens when I just move this over. See how that one kind of fills up right after the exit velocity one? So we get the staggered effect. So let's do the same thing for plate discipline. That's basically like how he's not swinging wildly. You guys probably don't care about this at all. <laughs> so I'll, I'll shut up. Um, sorry, I'm a nerd. Um, Phil, we will grab the width and just delay it after this guy. Same thing with clutch. Let's grab the fill and we'll take the width of that fill like so. So now we get this really sweet staggered effect. And that's looking pretty dope. Um, all right, so now that's good enough. Obviously you guys can spend way more time on this, you know, perfecting every little detail, but you know, for tutorial's sake, I'm just trying to get the point across here. But let's do this. In the initial state, I want everything faded out except for this left side. And if you guys want to customize it to your liking, you guys can you know, have that come in from the left and maybe I think that would be cool, but I'm running out of time here. <laughs> so let's take the opacity down for everything except that left side. It's basically like, we're gonna select this player. There's probably gonna be a screen before this to get to this point. But you know, in the interest of time, this this screen's gonna load and we're gonna to get to screen two. So let's see what happens. That's pretty cool, guys. Very dynamic looking. And, you know, when comparing to this <laughs> as a user, I think I would prefer to consume player stats in this fashion. You guys might disagree, but I think what we've created here is a really cool experience. All right, so I got a bit carried away and I uh, tweaked a few things. So actually, I changed the timing just to make it a little smoother. So I actually made the whole animation take a bit longer. And I think that looks a bit better. I also added a little hover state here for the stat area. And the idea is this will expand. And you see Judge kind of moves and grows a little, looks really scary. And maybe in a future video, I will repurpose this area for some more detailed stats or something. But yeah, just wanted to show you what you can kind of do in studio and how easy it is to do some pretty complex and interesting animations. So yeah, guys, that's been it. I uh, really hope you found this tutorial helpful. Again, I'm really loving studio and I plan on doing a lot more studio tutorials in the future as I continue to explore this tool. Um, if you guys found this helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you give a thumbs up. Subscribe for more tutorials. I try to upload at least once a week and uh, comment below with your thoughts. I'd love to hear your thoughts about Studio or if you have any questions about product design in general, happy to answer your questions and I will talk to you guys in the next video.